So, it's almost like I know what I'm fucking talking about, right, guys? Remember, remember, the CS2, it's abandoned where they've thrown it away, they don't, they don't care. They've spent thousands and thousands of man hours creating a new engine and porting things across to it, and now they've abandoned it and they're not going to do anything. <laughs> Endless Reddit threads, endless whining on uh, uh, Twitter about how the game has nothing, no content. People, like, LARPing that, like, oh, I loved Arms Race. <laughs> I loved it. Never played it, of course. And uh, me, just sat here, stoic. What did I say uh, last stream? It's actually in the Gowles video by At Happenstance that I just put out the other day. So if you watch that Gowles video, you can hear me say it. If I know Valve, and it turns out I'm Richard Lewis, I have covered extensively for two decades these develop these games development companies that happen to make esports, right? And I said there is going to be a big content update before the major, and then after that, the, the period between that and the major will be fixes because that just makes sense, and that's how Valve tend to do things. Yeah, well, I hope you're right. You're you're not the one. You because they've abandoned the game and they don't. Care. And it, anyway, it arrived yesterday. It arrived yesterday, and it's a banger. It's a, it's, it's a huge update. Exactly what I expected. It's content and fixes. It's eight and a half gigabytes. It's huge. It's like the it's the biggest. It's the biggest and most significant update since CS2 was launched. As I've said, by the way, Valve, give up. Actually, abandon the game, please. Like I'm telling you, you this community is toast now it's just full of dickheads and losers and entitled kids like please like actually after this major just say yeah we're just abandoning it we're gonna make another fucking steam deck that would be totally okay for me i will i will write the article that gives you total carte blanche to do that go for it because because at the end of the day here's what's happening now it's going to be two days from now right after this release and everyone's going to go back to Wah! Where's all my content? <laughs> I'm rubber banding now. Uh, they've updated it and broke everything else. Uh, it's just going to be that. I I've told you, and I'll say it again for this video, because it's always someone's first time. The average gamer these days wants one thing and one... Th well, they want everything is the joke. Uh, but this is what they want. They want a video game, right, that has endless content in it and they want it immediately and they want it for free and uh they also uh want it to work perfectly no matter what they do with their systems or what updates are happening right and when they play a game they want to win every time no matter what they don't even want to be challenged they just want the illusion of challenge if you made a game that was basically everyone else in it was an ai and and nobody else knew that it was an AI, and it was just designed basically to give you a modest challenge, but you always win in the end, and you had a 100% win rate on it, it would be the most popular game ever. Because modern gamers are weaklings. They are weaklings and losers. I think back to the original OG smelly gamers. Man, they were actual, like, they were like the Spartans compared to you guys. They were like the fucking Spartans. You would have been thrown off the cliffs. You're a fucking joke, modern gamers. Right? You wouldn't have made it. You wouldn't have even made it through CSGO. <laughs> God, it's been a whole year and the game still sucks and Hidden Path is still involved. <sighs> you would have lost your mind. So stop LARPing like you were there because I know you weren't because I would have fucking heard you. Community effort dragged that game to a place where Valve deigned it was worthy to put fucking microtransactions in. And that's what saved it. But anyway... CS2 isn't like that. Why? Because Valve want to make a good game. The games are the passion projects for Valve. They sit on an unlimited pile of money. They sit on Steam. Now, there's a lawsuit going on where uh, a games developer is saying that actually they charge too much to 30% or whatever it is of every sale. It's outrageous, especially when you factor in the market where they get secondary percentages of all of the sales that happen on that from, from your items and cards and all this other stuff. Uh, and so we'll see how that goes. We'll see what antitrust you know, or Monopoly people have to say about that. But they have infinite money, and they make good kit, and they generally do good projects, and they're totally into VR. But they do like to make good games, and it turns out they do make good games, right? They've made some stinkers. That never happened before. 
but they don't want that to become the norm. And so I know how invested they are in CS2, but as I've said many times, you do not just create a new engine, a proprietary new engine that you made from the ground up, and then you can go and hire a million people to work on it. Do you know why you can't? Because they didn't make it, you morons. They didn't make it. They don't know how it works. So you hire them, and then you have to teach them. That takes time. This game came out in the end of September. Today it is the 7th of February and it has had one sizable content update. CSGO would never. Counter-Strike Source would never. Counter-Strike never. These things didn't happen in other versions and yet they remain these hugely popular FPS games that you LARP about knowing about. But I was there, dickheads, so I know, and I know what the flow state of Valve is, and I'll tell you, they are fucking sleeves up, swabbing the decks on this one, compared to every other version of Counter-Strike. So shut the fuck up and let them make the fucking game. Now, with that said, huge update, right? And let's just take a look at this update, because when I say huge, I do mean huge. Now, unfortunately, the skin cells have been... Um, handed to but also skin cells in shambles here we go a call to arms so they brought arms race back remember that mode that nobody played and then you all pretended you did and then you were all crying about it here it is arms race it's back shut the fuck up like they weren't gonna put these things back in the game it's an entirely different game mode on an entirely brand new engine for which they have to either port across maps or make entirely new maps Right, and there it is. Arms Race has returned. You can shut the fuck up now pretending you ever played this mode and it can go back to being totally fucking dead. But you have it. You theoretically have it. Well done. Right? Arms Race has returned. Grab your guns and brace yourself for a chaotic race to the top. Get two kills with each weapon to reach the final stage or steal your opponent's progress with your knife or now with the Zeus. They've added the Zeus. More on that later. Uh, work your way up to the knife stage and earn the final kill to secure the win. Go, go, go! I not too much to say about that. Actually, though, I've heard some people complain about like optimization on the maps because, of course, you do. Uh, people are saying there's, you know, the FPS isn't very good and blah, blah, blah. Like, give it time. The optimization's going to be done. No, there's going to be another update day in a week where they're going to do some tweaks and some optimizations and some hot fixes and change some numbers that's how it works so just shut the fuck up show them it's worth doing by actually playing the fucking game shut the fuck up it's going to be fine right uh anyway this custom sticker placement here you go you're going to see a little illustration look at these go oh the pussy pattern oh my god oh oh ich habe durchfall oh Es tut weh, oh, mein Kopf tut weh, oh. Right, there you go, your favourite streamer there. I do know that means I have diarrhoea, it's fine. So, anyway, they uh, they have uh, custom sticker placements, right? So now, instead of doing what they did before, where you stack up the four and it's all in the presets and you choose the position uh, and there's like a maximum of four, you can now move the sticker around and everybody's lost their mind on this. So because they want to go back in time and those stickers they already placed in the limited positions, they want a one-time amnesty on I want to re-stick my sticker, right? Let me just tell you about how I feel about that, skin cells. Shut the fuck up. Shut up, you fucking children, right? I'm going to just say this, right? Like, I used to have real stickers, right? Panini stickers, you know, football stickers. And they were sticky, and they used to pull them out. If you didn't get them flush in the box, you didn't get a do-over. If you pulled them off, it ripped the whole page, didn't it? Did we cry? No. We just said, next time, I'm going to do a much better and more precise job of how I put Paul Gascoigne in. And actually, sometimes, if it was a really good player, you waited until you got another copy and you stick it over it and you hope nobody noticed. Oh, yeah, the old Panini double sticker. You think, I don't know about that. Now, if we had to grow up with that, right? Do you think we got to cry? Oh, Panini, Panini, please send me a free fucking book so I can redo the book and send me all the stickers again. Panini used to wear you down as a child you had to buy so many sticker packs and then if you got down to out of, out of about 450 stickers per annual if you got down to the last 50 you could write off and pay them to send you out the specific 50 if they had them in stock and it took forever to get right that's how we used to live back in the day right and that's what this is based on so shut the fuck up once you stick a sticker it's stuck that's why it's called a sticker fucking morons next thing 
I'll say about this. Yeah, it's actually good that you now can like stick them in, in, in better places. Because some of the default places, they were pretty shit actually. Some of the default places, obscured patterns and some stickers didn't look that very good. And some skins didn't look that good. And so, all right, fair dues. We just won't put stickers on them. But now you can. Now you can augment your gun by moving the stickers around. Very good, very good choice. Now I'll just say this. They do this update... How long do you think it took for the first penis? I measured it, not my penis, but the amount of time it took. 43 seconds. It was a world record knob. Daylight knobbery, 43 seconds. It took 43 seconds from this update being out in the wild to somebody putting a knob on a gun. Well done, CS guys. You've done it again. Dick Stacy, his name was. No, just kidding. The, it's, I, I don't know, guys. Now, okay, knobs, knobs are funny, right? Like hilarious knobs. Ah, right, I get it. I, you know. How long before the N word? Not as funny, is it? Nah, didn't think so. How long do you think that took? Two minutes. Almost bang on flush. Two minutes before the front page of Reddit had an, a, a bunch of, of five stickers saying the N word on a gun. Now, due to the limitations, it wasn't a hard R. So there's that. But that. Well done, again, well done, Counter-Strike community. Oh, yeah. Great fucking moment for us. Then, Skinport have had to stop displaying uh, graphical imagery temporarily with their skin stuff. Do you know why? Somebody figured out a way to put SWAT stickers on as well. There's, like, L-shaped stickers and... Right? And, to be fair, that took a little bit longer for everyone to figure out. That took eight minutes. Gamers, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe Anita Sarkeesian was right, eh? The fact that you would, like, do this and then share this as well. Like, <laughs> look. So, yeah, Skinport did a tweet uh, that said, uh, yeah, unfortunately, due to symbols associated with extremism is what they said. It's like, yeah... <laughs> It would have been okay to say extremist symbols, I think. Like, adding that, it's symbols associated with extremism. Like, the swastika's like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Add all through in that for everyone. All the Buddhists are like, well, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but, anyway, but anyway, eight minutes it took. So, again, I just, the CS community is just a fucking disgrace. It's just pathetic. Not my community. Right, hashtag not my community. Just embarrassing. Oh, and the worst part was as well, by the way, uh, imagine doing this. Valve put a tweet out on their official Counter-Strike and said, hey, time to see these new sticker arrangements or something like that. Show us what you've got. Wah, wah. Yeah, perfect, yeah. Yeah. Hey, morons. Come and show me the stupid things you did. Wah. Now, why you would show the maker of the game? Haha, <laughs> look, I'm putting extremist symbols in my in my Oh, what? My account has got banned. It must be a false positive. Help, help. The consequences of my unbelievably stupid actions. So, I, I was there watching it, even though it was super late. I nearly threw the stream live because I thought, ah, I can cheat some traffic here. But I thought, actually, nah, fuck it. Not going to bother. It's just going to be a mess, and I'm going to click on something, and it's going to be awful, and I'm going to get banned off Twitch. So, no, we'll wait, and we'll sift. We'll sift through the detritus in the morning, I said to myself, and I went to sleep. Anyway, there you go. Custom sticker placement for all the edgy boys coming soon to your games with anime profiles, 100 hours, and suspiciously good aim. There's cheaters in every game. Didn't you know? Then they announced the case, the Kilowatt case, and Owner Pixel rejoiced. Actually, for part of the bespoke content, I believe it was Reykjavik on Steam, if he's still in the chat, didn't you say I had to review this case in the style of Owner Pixel? Right, so what I'm going to do, see, I remember. This is what happens when you clean up your act. Your memory comes back. The cells, they restore. Unless you're Joe Biden, he's permanently on the cocktail and it doesn't often. But anyway, so I'm not going to do that tonight because that requires scripting and energy, right? So, But I will do it. I'll do it like next time I'm on stream. It'll be the first thing I do. Now, I don't know how I'm going to make myself look like Owen a Pixel. I don't know if there's a particular type of clothes that he wears. If Owen a Pixel what is watching, uh, could you get into... Uh, no, I know I've got you blocked, but that's only because your tweets are awful. 
spectacularly awful. In fact, just to also add it, wait, going back to uh, this, the custom sticker placement, it's on the front page of Reddit right now, and again, I can't show it to you, so you just have to take my word. Maybe Griff will put these things in as I'm talking about them for the YouTube video. I don't know. Uh, OwnerPixel tweeted at the official Counter-Strike account going, maybe you should put sex in the game or something. And um, anyway, uh, when they did this sticker update, OwnerPixel then heard, was was looking at a sticker and it was a sticker of a man behind an anime waifu and it looked like, you know, he was doing the... No. No. He was, he was a backdoor delivery, you dig? And then it's like everyone's going, it's happening, it's happening! That's the intellectual level that we're on there. You know, but anyway, if you if you if you get sent this clip by one of your gremlins, uh, what would you say would be good to wear? Um, you know, because uh, I don't really I don't really sort of have an an association of you in my in my mind. Uh, I just know that you talk German and scream, and I, I will I will turn the fucking gain up on my mic so it's unbearable for the whole bit. I might even go like that full fucking like that pimp clip where the guy's like, "Hi everybody, I just got my new microphone." <laughs> just, just do do the whole bit like that. Anyway, we can have a quick look and see. Look, we got we got all of this, but the real standout highlight because words don't always translate across cultures. We've got the slag. We've got the slag, ladies and gentlemen. Best thing in the update. It's a slag. Slag. Now, for those who don't know, uh, in Britain, slag, right? Well, it means lots of things. Like, for, uh, slag heap, for example, is obviously, you know, slag, like things that are, like, run off and left over from industrial production and mining. But anyway, slag became uh, a word in Britain. A slag means uh, promiscuous or, tre or treacherous woman. So, I don't know why I said it like Jonathan Ross there, right? thinking about him still uh, from my childhood right a treacherous uh, woman but but it just basically be became you know like a uh, uh, promiscuous woman and you would go oh that's a slag and then that got adopted cause it was such a good word it's got all the right sounds for an insult you know like how certain like the kind of onomatopoeic feel the mouth feel of certain words like you know fuck and cunt they are fucking great like cunt it just it's perfect like it's, it's got everything you need it's got everything you need in like one syllable essentially like to just fucking really you know cut to someone's core and so you know slag is like that slag became a sort of generic insult so you call someone a slag you know and generally when you tran when you transfer insults that were typically aimed at women particularly about you know promiscuity or body parts you know like pussy for example once you try once you transfer it over to a man which seems to happen a lot in culture obviously because of you know gender divides historical gender divides uh, it becomes especially offensive so you know you will see in london in particular and in london 70s london crime movies and that kind of thing you fucking slag you're a slag i will fucking slap you you slag sit down you fucking slag and it's brilliant right it's brilliant and of course you also have let me just see if i can find that one of the best lines ever uttered on uh east enders so just to make it a, just to make it clear there are levels of slaggery that people can get into you know there's levels of slaggery right you know you 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 can be a slag but a total slag is like you just no self-respect you're just getting it all the time a total slag and obviously you know i don't really think total slag actually ever really translated across to the mail that like you're a total slag it probably sometimes but slag is like just to put down you're like you're nothing like you're just a fucking weakling i will fucking i will slap the shit out of you slag it's it's great it's wonderful and now it's in the game that's the point you know we've done this whole thing of uh yeah or if you're german total and schlag and schlag and um but anyway we've got slag in the game uh, that, all of this is to say the word slag is amazing it's hilarious that there's a fucking slag gun in the game i love it they meant oh it looks like it's come out of a foundry <laughs> <laughs> but to everyone else, to us, to, to the Europeans, to the Brits especially, slag is amazing. And I can't wait because it's also on a run and gun gun in a game. So you get to slag people. Sit down, slag. You get to fucking type it. Killing them with a tech nine. I just slagged you. Brilliant. Great stuff. Love it. Wonderful. Valve, Valve, the best. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, obviously, the Etch Lord. 
You see, they've done a thing that's kind of funny because it's an edge lord. You see, you think, by the way, you think Valve don't know what they're doing when they did that sticker update. You think they didn't predict what you were going to do, right? They even got a rifle and called it the edge lord, and then you put slurs on it, right? Do you see how pathetic you are, right? Do you see how pathetic you are? So we'll have the edge lord, right? We'll have the edge lord. Kind of like that too, because that reminds me of a ZX Spectrum. Oh, and this is the other thing. Uh, Zeus. They've made some serious changes to the Zeus, but you will know this is the first ever, first ever Zeus skin. Uh, good one. I uh, actually like it, the Olympus. It's uh, very thematically intelligent. It's good artwork. Uh, that's going to be mega, I think. That is actually a banger. Like, we'll get into it when I do the review, but they, they, there's all the other stuff. Uh, and of course, a knife. Well, what would a case be without a knife? Uh, now, you see here, in addition, again, it's first weapon finish in the kilowatt case. The Zeus is getting a few other upgrades. It now supports name tags. Always love a name tag in this game. That One of the worst features about skins, the names people use. It's actually ridiculous. Uh, and stickers. And it recharges in 30 seconds in all game modes. So one of the things I love about this update is they haven't given a single solitary fuck about the, the meta. They've just put something into the game. Now, listen, this has the potential to be, like, R, no, not R8 levels are broken, but it could be broken. It could be busted. Like, you don't know. And, obviously, we've got a tournament going on. More on that later. And they've just put this in, in the middle of a fucking tournament, where a Zeus is going to potentially recharge. Now, remember, obviously, the great thing about a Zeus is you can buy it relatively cheap, and it stuns people and it takes them out of the game with one bullet. It was always, like, a little bit of a gam. I, I think it was intended to be, like, a gamble stack kind of strategy where if you hid around a corner and someone didn't check it you could zap them take a gun maybe win you could zap a couple of people but having the uh, ability to get a kill and then sort of back away and if they don't have a great weapon that you can pick up you can maybe gamble with the zeus gang because it's going to recharge in 30 seconds i think that's super interesting now whether or not we will ever see it sort of come into play it might it doesn't feel like it's going to be mega strong but i think it has the potential to maybe impact on how people think about eco rounds and maybe approach them or certain types of tactics so you know like i'm all about this like i love when valve do stuff like this I love when Valve takes it when that's already in the game and they just attune it. And, you know, maybe it's going to be good, maybe it's going to be bad. But I wish they did this more, not less. I wish they did that. The only people who don't like things like this are the fucking pros and the morons that delude themselves into thinking they're going to be pros. They hate change. They whine about it all the time and then they wonder why Valve do other things. I like shit like this. Put put more of it in the game. I, I hope Donk gets like a fucking Zeus Ace or something mega. In a, <laughs> I don't even think that's possible uh with the time but you know something along those lines like uh, see a fucking you know a team ace all with zeus's or something would be fucking sick i know it's not possible yeah i i, I can do maths i can do maths but you know something like that something like that uh it, it would be great to see stickers and music kits uh again i'm not going to get into this i don't know if this has to be part of my fake owner pixel review i'll let Rekovic decide that um i'm not really interested in any of this stuff you know it doesn't really uh bother me the little sort of lotus thing looks kind of cool but what i do like is the music kits uh, i'm so glad it wasn't like fucking cringe you know like all the hanger on fucking content creators getting their shit again uh i actually saw i can't remember which uh which of the artists it was but they literally posted on the front page reddit thread like just saying like was we're mega excited to be in cs we love the game and uh we just want to let you guys know all of our music's like totally dmca free you can play it on stream you can have it in the game it's fine and they seemed like super fucking cool uh so you know and it did need more music kits in the game i hope this is something they do more of going forward uh and not just around cases because it is interesting content and it adds a little bit of you know color to your account and you know uniqueness to the game and it's also a good opportunity for particularly aspiring artists to reach an audience that will like their music via positive association or just being exposed you know for the first time and they even make uh, make money off it so seems great to me happy with that then there was the xp overload and uh, uh this is a little interesting adjustment when you've earned all of the norm normal weekly xp and have entered reduced xp gain you'll get something to show for it an xp overload icon will appear next to your name and it's showing that uh, in the bottom and the scoreboard and kill feed and you'll have at least one week to show it off for every week you keep your xp earning streak alive your xp overload icon 
uh, will upgrade. And so this is like another fucking thing that it doesn't sound like it's going to make a difference. But when you know how many fucking like weirdos play this game, like the fact that it's it's basically like the no lifer fucking symbol, the grinder symbol that's actually going to be big people are going to complain about like oh i couldn't log in for a day because the internet was down and i lost my streak please fucking help valve please give me my no life i i had an eight week streak on it you know it's going to be like that right and 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 the funny part is valve have just jedi mind fucked you all because that type of loser that wants that symbol next to it is going to want to fucking play and keep it and there you go we've just i've just retained your interest and I didn't have to give you any content or anything good. I'm telling you, I know enough about this community now, like where it's at and what they prioritize, that people are going to be like, people are going to want to have that badge, not just so they can show like, you know, I grind all the time, but also to troll people with it. And like, you're going to get shot and you're fucking no lifer, eight weeks, lol, get it, touch grass, get a girlfriend. Ah, I mentally broke you down. I mentally broke you down with my streak button. So that's actually hilarious uh, that the XP overload is fucking uh, a thing now. And then this, uh, the agony of defeat. Uh, check out them abs. Jeepers. Uh, let's face it, losing a match isn't always something to celebrate. Agents with unique uh, end of match animations now express both the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And you can see there, they're all, oh, I'm so sad. I'm so sad my terrorist operation didn't happen. Uh, it didn't blow up the innocent people. Uh, so sad. Why won't my terrorism work? So you can see that. There, a bit of terrorism. Or oh, if you're a counter-terrorist. Oh, no. Say the line. He, w he was on our radar. He was on our radar, and I couldn't stop him. It was an MK Ultra. Oh, he was on our radar. Say the line. Say the line, sad fed. Say the line. Anyway, so, hey, great. Just nice little, nice little cosmetic things that they've uh, they've they've just added in there. So he was on our radar, boo hoo. Uh, and then we've got this, and this is where it gets fucking mega, because I I remember. The, the, listen, so the first knee jerk reaction I actually saw to this was, oh, oh it's all just, they're, they're distracting you with a case. The game's still gonna suck. There's cheaters everywhere. The bullets don't work. And, so let's, let's just get into some of that, right? Uh, first of all, we know arms race is in there, so we don't need to talk about that anymore. We know the case is in there. Uh, also just says here, various bug fixes and tweaks, which I would assume relates to skins and how they look rather than just like in general, but maybe because there were like a number of bugs actually fixed in the gameplay aspect as well. Uh, stickers, uh, you can see here, it says all the stickers. Again, various bug fixes and tweaks. So that obviously, I, I again assume, relates to stickers. I don't follow these things. I'm not a skin cell. So I don't know what bugs or what things. I mean, by the way, the idea of a bug in the mind of a skin cell is, it looks shinier in CSGO. It's a different shade of red in CS2. Like, these are the things they care about. You're reducing the value. Like, uh, yeah, but it's all in your mind. Like, you're just fucking weirdos. So, you know, whatever. But that's that's what it's like to be a skin cell, you know? So, I, I don't know. But apparently, they're, they are bugs. Anyway, uh, music kits, Nightmare Music Kit Box. Uh, and then here we go. I made the Zeus reusable, uh, kill icon, kill cards, blah, blah, and a damage report, which is sick. All of that's been added in there now. Smokes. Here we go. Smokes now cast shadows. It's kind of fucking. I don't even. I know. Why is that in there? I'm. I'm trying to think of like some practical application. As to. I mean, don't get me wrong. Hugely impressive from a game engine perspective. Don't know if the game needed it in any way, shape, or form. But just seems to be weird. Probably going to be an FPS nightmare. You know. But wow. Yeah. Your solid smokes have shadows now. Well, great. I haven't got in and played it yet. But yeah, I've heard like. Yep, you've just typed it in the chat. Uh, I've heard that, like, oh, the the smoke shadow might obfuscate the player shadow. It, like, overrides it so you can, you know, be a bit more tricksy in smokes or whatever. But obviously, I don't play this game, remember? I don't play it, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so take that with a pinch of salt. But, yeah, so that's that's super interesting that that changes in there. Another little bit of... Another little aspect which could potentially 
uh, impact on the meta, maybe on the pro scene, how people conceptualize how you play around smokes and stuff. So see how that goes. Uh, smoke rendering and animation have been improved. Obviously needed to happen. I know a lot of us have had some issues with the smokes and just sort of how they occlude, I guess is the word, and how they bloom. So we'll see. Here we go. We got it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. A refund all button. There you go. All you quick, tricksy, buying, spamming players, you've got your refund all button. Absolute no-brainer to fucking put this in the game, by the way. Like, I don't know why you wouldn't fucking have that there, but fair dues. Then added a setting to disable the first-person bullet traces. Thank God. And here's the thing, by the way. All you bitches, right, out there on Santa Monica Boulevard crying about how valve don't care and they don't listen and they're not improving anything remember when this whole sub tick thing was rolled out the traces were kind of like fucking conceptually part of that and that was how it was going to fucking look like you know went in the new game and everyone hated the traces now i'll tell you this i also sort of agree it's the one time i've been on the side with the morons and the plebs uh yeah i don't i, I didn't like it I, you know i don't like it i don't think it needs to be there i don't think it adds anything to the game especially as it's in it's intuitively deceptive in how you know individual feedback and unlike oh, i want cl right hand zero unlike that which impacts on nothing except the placebo in your brain the traces actually did make a difference because of just how basic visual feedback works not the model but you're looking at b the traces are meant to be for the bullets if they're not going where the traces are that's a fucking pretty uh, big problem in terms of how you you know compute it in your brain so anyway uh that's great just take that off and and you don't have to maybe you like the traces maybe i'll be tracer put it in it's fine great 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 update love that silences can now always be reattached regardless of whether detaching them is enabled or not again just another basic thing that you want uh you know in in, in, a, in a game if you're going to use the silence weapons uh player pings are no longer blocked by invisible geometry super frustrating in the game you're trying to ping on something sorry it's got a weird fucked up edge that hasn't been optimized and now the ping doesn't go off and so you're having to ping slightly in a different spot again it's not game breaking it wasn't a massive deal it wasn't a massive issue but it needed to be fixed and now it is uh, various adjustments to the sub tick shooting just love that just love that they've just left it there Listen, Subtick's new technology, we're fine-tuning it. We acknowledge it's been suboptimal. As I said, my issue with the Subtick up until this point has been that it seems to be unbelievable, crunchy, crispy headshots. Like, when you nail a headshot, it, CS has actually never felt better, I actually think, than CS2. I think nailing that headshot in CS2 is better than any other game in the series. Uh, and also, the super satisfying fast flicks on your rifle when you get them unbelievably good uh, but the problem is the spraying the spray downs the recoil control it all feels a little bit sluggish and a bit spongy and that's obviously related to how the sub tick is sort of processing you know the bullet registry now i have no idea what the changes are definitely have no insight into that and you know it was something i got used to which is another reason why i'm not like oh they broke shooting in the game i don't think they broke it i think every version of cs is different and you learn how to play around it but i will say i think i think it can be better and i think they can improve it and i'm sh I, even though i haven't played since this update early reciprocal feedback back seems to be that actually yeah well apart from the rubber banding and the hype uh, and some of the other issues uh the fps issues uh the 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 shooting certainly people seem to be satisfied with that it's it's took a step in the right direction and look just as a broader point sub tick it's here to stay and you should all welcome it because in theory if it if if subtick operated 100 percent how valve conceptualize it it's one of the biggest things that ever happened to online fps's you should be totally behind that there's nothing more frustrating than the reality of ping differential impacting on performance and if subtick as a technology can get us over that hump it's absolutely fucking huge it's huge for online play which is what you plebs do the people who were complaining about it, it doesn't affect the pros they they can, you know they bitch about it for like clicks or whatever but you know everybody agrees that cs2 on land feels you know fine you know different but fine 
It's, it's online where a lot of these issues arise. And so, you know, hopefully they can nail it. Fixed several cases where players could silently drop down vertical surfaces. There were a number of, like, points on maps where you could, like, drop and it wouldn't give a sound cue. I think I saw a clip of it happening in a game. I can't remember what game it was, but there was a clip on, like... I saw, again, I saw the clip on Twitter and I was like, oh, yeah, that's fucking... You know, I, 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 I understand things like that shouldn't be in the game, but it is cool when players, like, learn those things, like one-way smokes, and then they implement them in the game. You know, someone like Munisi, like, learning every single abusable, you know, like, advantage in the game. I kind of think that's cool. But, uh, you know, again, it shouldn't be in there. So, yeah, that might have been it. Yeah, it might have been the Z-Woo nuke drop. Yeah, you can drop from heaven away and not make a noise, you know, which is obviously like, really silly that that's in the game. So, yeah, it's good as took out. Improved smoothness of sliding along surfaces. Uh, a lot of people... I don't care about surf maps. I think surf maps suck. I think they're dumb. I think they're boring. And I think the surf community is, by and large, insufferable. But, that being said, I have no idea if this is fixed surf. Launders will be a better person whose video to go and watch about that, I'd say. He is really big in, in that community and all the trick jumping community, so I don't know if that has an impact on Surf or any way, shape, or form. Uh, but um, I think some people were like speculating on Reddit that it might. Uh, so, what, you know, go, go look into that. It's not something I'm interested in. The collisions between players were jittery. It was the worst thing. Running out of spawn and getting that, like, and you're, like, jittering, and, like, it looks awful. It looks really unpolished. It was, like, kind of, like, lifting the veil a little bit on the game mechanics, you know, and how the things work, you know, like, how the legs kind of aren't real, and the models are kind of, like, you know, fucked up still. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it just didn't look good, and it needed to be fixed, and, uh, yeah, not much more to say about that. And then... To ensure loadouts are correct at the beginning of matches, loadout changes are no longer allowed while searching for Premier, Competitive, or Wingman. So, you know, I don't really have any strong feelings about this uh, change, but it seems to me they're sort of saying to you guys, like, you know, look, we're not going to... Once you hit Q, your loadout is fixed, so do it earlier. Because, you know, some people are like, oh, shit, I'm in a Q. Oh, quick, I better change my loadout. Fuck, I forgot I wanted to go back to the Silence Den 4 or for this matter, you know, or for, for whatever. And then you, you don't get it done in time, and then people are whining and belly aching, so, you know fine whatever sound added the option to select an audio de input device for your uh, voice program from the audio settings menu now this is, uh, and also I'll, I'll talk about these all in one added the option to change your microphone threshold from the audio options menu added the option to listen to your microphone from the audio settings menu to hear how you sound so all of these three changes one of the most embarrassing things i think in a game made by a company like valve who've always had a level of polish and care has always been that the mics in every version of cs have always been shit so like in 1.6 you had all of the same problems shitty codec to boot as well like the mics never sounded great no matter how good your mic or headset was at your end source had a ton of problems obviously cs go basically is the legacy of the problems we're having in cs2 which is sometimes your mic just doesn't work and you don't know why and everything seems fine and it's only cs it doesn't work in and that sort of carried that carried across into cs2 and there's, this is a game about communication. There is nothing worse than, you know, going half a game realizing no one's heard a single call you've made. Or, you know, fucking someone's making calls, but it sounds like they're on the fucking Kursk submarine, like breathing out their last. Like, like, it's so bad and tilting that it's like, you know, you've got to fucking. It's something that they've got to put some time and fucking love into, you know? And it's been, it's been long, long overdue. No excuses on Valve's part. It's indefensible that a game that relies on communication has all these problems. And spoiler, it is. There are a lot of similar issues in Dota. Not identical issues, but Dota has problems, again, where, like, mics just sound terrible, even though they're not. You know, I've had people say to me, think about, like, my setup. You know, this is, like, a fucking four... This is, like, a 400-pound microphone with a built-in condenser designed for podcasting going through a mixer, going into a PC, right, where I can then, even then, manually adjust it. And people are going, wow, your mic sounds dog shit. And you're like, well... I, if mine sounds dog shit i don't know I like you know so you have to go in you have to like fucking you know fiddle around with stuff all the time 
Valve have been really bad on the sound input. And you can argue, well, you know, it sort of makes it redundant. Most people queue with friends and you just focus on that. No, these are meant to be social experiences for good or ill. The mics really had to be a bigger priority, in my opinion, because it... it it's such a negative experience you know obviously as soon as the mic works they start calling you slurs and you mute them but you know at least at least let me see if i'm playing with a normal person or not you know they changed the m249 sound effect it's good it sounds meaty and chunky now which is what you want perfect uh they've changed uh the zeus sound effects as well sounds good reduced occlusion effects which again good it was a little bit too shiny bit too you know in, in some in some places not shiny sorry a bit too what's the word f for sound when it's a bit too bright vib vibrant i guess uh you know so uh yeah that's fine and yeah there was also this weird issue i had this a bunch of times it was kind of like when you, when I first started playing CS2, you know, and I think they must have tweaked this somewhere else along the line because I remember it not being as bad uh, towards the end of, of, of my playtime with the game. But you know, there was this thing where it was like you kind of were in a horror movie, like it was like fucking like you know, you you, you, ch -ch -ch, you were never quite sure where like the sound was here but it should have been here but it wasn't or it should have been here and it wasn't it was kind of like just a little bit off but i i think uh the huge win in cs2 no one ever really talks about is the directional sound the directional sound in cs2 is the best directional sound i think in any version of cs uh it's actually fucking mega uh but if you take the time to like tune it right this is the best I think I've ever had in a version of Counter-Strike. And it's crazy to me that, again, it's another massive positive that, you know, we needed directional sound to be absolutely perfect in a game where, you know, every crosshair placement is so vitally important. And nobody nobody praises that. Nobody's, like, wanking off about how good or important that is. Instead, they're crying about, uh, oh, peak is advantage. Wide swinging on me like an animal. Uh, and it's just like, oh, God. Like, like the, the CS2 made some fucking huge strides for the for the franchise uh, and then there's this speaking of peaker's advantage reducing peaker's advantage in many cases the amount of peaker's advantage in the steady state is reduced by 16 ms and so obviously this has been the other big talk that some because of the sub tick system and the networking and how it all interacts with each other uh it's created a very aggressive meta where actually holding angles is a lot harder playing passively generally isn't rewarded and taking aggressive fights is because the peaker's advantage is theoretically significantly more in cs2 now i saw the war owl video and war owl did his little test and he came to the conclusion that that was only true at high ping the vast majority of the player base disagrees with that but ultimately the vast majority of the player base does appear on an average day to be totally fucking delusional so i don't know what i will say is yeah i got banged out a couple of times by like somebody who sort of it felt like i'd only seen them for a fraction of a second and then you go back and you go oh yeah he, he totally was just there it made me look slow but that didn't happen a lot to me i can't remember a time like it's all it obviously happened in the games but i never i don't remember a time where i was egregiously getting killed by people who weren't on my screen i generally obviously i have a good internet connection stable internet connection uh i get low ping um so i don't know i didn't think it was as bad as a lot of people made out but you know there's always going to be peaker's advantage there was massive peaker's advantage in csgo i don't know why people say like oh you know holding angles was like perfect and optimal and all that no like if you've got a good pre if you've got a good peak you know the f fucking xantara's peak off like you would that was obviously optimal to do yeah it was hard you know it was harder because of the latency but like it was in the game like you peaker's advantage is going to be in every fps game so i i I don't know if it's as bad as people were saying uh i don't know if this has fixed it to a degree people are going to be satisfied and shut the fuck up about it but we'll find out we'll find out anyway also reduced the frequency of situations that led to very large peakers advantage due to excessive command q depth now i don't know what that is jace will know in coder speak but uh, the bottom line is obviously remember this is a game they should have just called this a beta and we'd all be maybe the complaining wouldn't be as as brutal but because it's not a beta uh we, you know this is what we've got but anyway it sounds like yes there have been some like fundamental problems behind the curtain where in how the game works and there were definitely some situations where you were getting this outrageous peaker's advantage that was completely non-reflective of what how it would have been in any other fps and that's totally fine you know if they're fixing these things 
again everybody should be happy the cl tick timing console command prints a report breaking down the various sources of latency i've seen a few people posting those already on reddit uh basically to talk about you know like where all the issues are sort of in their latency that i imagine that's going to come in handy for a lot of bug fixing and uh, optimization for players and uh, you can now have an option to buffer server updates and user commands by one or more pa uh, packets uh so you can smooth over any stuttering due to packet loss a lot of people have been complaining about packet loss again not something i experienced at any point in my time with the game uh, a lot of people are saying they get mad packet loss and stop playing because it's unplayable because of the packet loss and so valve seem to think this might be, this i this might be a potential fix or work around to the people that that is that is affecting so again these are all very the networking and gameplay changes are like massively huge intuitive uh, steps towards fixing problems the community have fucking whined about ad nauseum that valve were always going to fix and then out of the rest of the stuff there's not really uh you know a couple of like ui uh updates uh which is fine more accolades have been added you get a little title or accolade at the end of the game they it sounds like they might have addressed the high dpi mice issue um certain high dpi mice you could like shake around and it would make you like like weird like jittery like you were in jacob's ladder or some shit like doing that um and i don't know if that's linked to what the people were doing with the spins and the bands and and the band that people are still to this day saying oh there's people banned there's people banned and there were false positives and it's like pretty sure if it's months down the road at this point whatever they did valve consider it bannable and you're not getting unbanned and we should stop saying it's like a false positive when there's been no communication on that issue whatsoever so you are again making assumptions about those bans uh i don't care if there's that video of that one dude who said look this will get me banned and then he did the thing and then he got banned shortly afterwards and uploaded it we, we have no idea about the parameters what was going on what valve were thinking and i think one of the settings by the way i think they've even said that one of the settings that enables you to do that and go so ridiculously rapid i can't remember the command but i'm pretty sure that's like a command that you're not supposed to be using anyway i thought that was like widely accepted so i don't fucking know but the bottom line is, like, uh, if that is sort of helping fix that problem and preventing it from happening in future, they have once again listened to you guys on this fucking small issue. Like, maybe don't pretend you're a fucking spin botter in a game. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, just, there's a thought. Uh, but whatever. Uh, and then uh, they've done some improvements to the demo playback. Again, they really need to trick out the demo player as much as they can. And that's that, really. The rest of the stuff is, like, map fixes and blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, for me, I think this is a fantastic update. Uh, it's not just a really good update for CS2. Uh, it's, like, a really good update within the context of updates uh, for Counter-Strike. You know, it's not an operation, obviously, but that that's what I'm saying. Like, excluding operations, in terms of this just being like an all-round gameplay slash content update, this is exactly what I expected from Valve to tide everyone over until the major. And now the real work begins. Uh, we're going to start looking at, obviously, all the game fixes in depth. And that's what they're going to be doing. Now, on that point, I just want to just want to point out a couple of things. Uh, increasingly, my content around Counter Strike, usually the morons are on Reddit and they're plebs and they're gamers and they just want to be good at a video game and their brains break when they can't handle that they're not good at the video game. And it's really like you know, it's, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. But that's what the community is, and I'm going to talk about community issues in my content. And if the community's dumb, then that's just where we're at. But increasingly, what's annoying me is the uh it's it's the fucking pros saying stupid things uh and the pros are like yeah what we need is a super secret cabal of players banning people by demo you know that's the new thing that they're saying now which is completely fucking ridiculous and the other thing they're doing is they're encouraging this idea that like oh the game is broken and bad. What happened was, prior to the release of the update, a CS, the CS, official CS account showed a tweet, uh, which uh, they showed a video, rather, in a tweet, which was this. They were like, look, look at the cool thing with the sticker placement. And this was like a little teaser of what was coming. 
right? And so, of in you know, the the update dropped not long after this, uh, and people were like, "Oh, this is big! All the skin cells were in shambles. All the sticker holics were going fucking crazy about it, and you know what what it, what it meant." And anyway, in response to this, right? Like, like if you know anything about Valve and you know anything about games development, you know about how and you know anything about how content is drip fed to players and consumers, you know this means we're getting an update like soon, either like that day or you know the next 24 hours why else would i why else would i tease this feature like this why else would i tease the feature with a vague statement thoughts on this new craft excuse the bare hands like they're blatantly alluding to a bunch of stuff there in just a few words and showing you something cool right you know you're getting something so what's the response i don't know like fucking all the influencers are going to be replying like hey oh you know all of that shit right like, just to get their little clicks and their fucking engagement but what, are the, what about a pro player? Like, tell me, by the way, like, what is this? Like, what is the point of this? Nice, but please fix the game. That's your input, Hades. That's your input. That is your input. You are a pro player, and the, 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 your level of articulation about what the issues are with the game is, it's, it's broken, is it? It's totally broken and needs to be fixed. Just fix game. That's your contribution. So, by the way, has there ever been an update of like valves where they've just gone listen we know there's a bunch of game breaking issues in there and we spent a bu bunch of time updating the game we didn't fix any of those issues by the way like we none of them whatsoever because why would we like we fix game fix game and this went on a reddit and people are going this is the game this is the game game sucks loads of patrick bateman going uh, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. And again, it's this clout harvesting nonsense that pros have started to engage in now about saying the game is shit. Listen, I've told you what to do, pros. If you believe the game is broken, refuse to play. It'll only take one boycott, right? But you won't, will you? You won't. You won't give up the money. You won't give up the prize money. So you'll play the broken game and you'll fucking whine about it because you're all fucking spineless, greedy people. Like, you know? So... Uh, 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 just absolutely ridiculous like you know t say we're gonna go to valorant if you don't fix the game force valve's hand see how that works but you won't do that and then there was this other thing and i'm just like oh it's wow like just fucking wow 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 like moronism the cult of moronism so who see like pipes now listen obviously i just again People are like, you're always picking on Hooksy. You can't handle that you won a tournament with G2 when you said he was going to be bad or whatever it is. I even did a tweet the other day, uh, which I'll, I'll just include in this video. Uh, it's great. Uh, I look, I'm transparent now. I don't care what you think about my opinions because I've realized a lot of morons don't even listen to what the opinion is. You're angry about the opinion you think I have. Well, all right, then I can't really do anything about that. So I'm not going to. It ain't going to stress me and it ain't going to phase me, right? It, it, I'm going to say what I want to say when I want to say it and I yeah, don't no, cry about it. Fuck you. you know, but if you like the opinions, come along for the ride. We can all have fun. So I tweeted this out, right? Obviously, G2 were playing yesterday. And I said... Um, you know, I really love where G2 is at these days. If they win, I can laugh at the JKS stands. If they lose, I can blame it on Hooksy. Truly a sports pundit's dream. Now, actually, right, you might look at that and go, oh, he's just hating on his usual suspects. But this is why this is actually, a, you see, I'm on a different level when I tweet. That is actually a really funny meta commentary about the ephemeral nature of punditry and sports criticism and how the system is always gamed to generate content, right? So I'm actually, I'm actually acknowledging the role sports pundits play and kind of like milking sentiment, right? But, but people, but people won't appreciate that. You won't appreciate that. But also, at its base level, totally fucking true. I do feel that way. Now, obviously, my old mate Taz, uh, he saw that and thought that was funny. He, he just he just said, like, he just said, Richard, come on, bro. And he's laughing about it because he gets it. You know what I mean? And, like, by the way, w how wonderful it has been to watch some of my favorite players uh, from a wonderful era of Counter-Strike who played in one of the most exciting teams uh, ever, well, multiple times, you know, Taz, Neo, Kuban, and they've all gone on to be coaches of, like, successful, you know, tier one organizations. They're still in the game. They're all having these rivalries with each other. 
it's it's, it's actually a great time and I, I wish they would make more of it on the broadcast i'd love to see a broadcast do a bunch of shoulder content about it interview each of the coaches you know get their philosophies about how they approach the game and how they coach so we could learn more about it and that was like super cool that little moment with taz and coom kind of looking at each other after the game like make more of that these people are fucking legends they are like icons you know what i mean and they're coaches now and so many players don't get to do what they're doing and three of them from the same team in the same era are all doing it at the same time this is this is 30 for 30 level shit you're missing a trick here esl you're missing a trick here blast someone get on that someone get on that i want to hear about that so yeah you know love taz like he gets it he, there's no malice you know he understands what i'm really saying in the tweet so anyway uh we we, <laughs> we did that uh, but listen that being said i still think hooksy sucks <laughs> so i'm sorry like i just I, it, he seems 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 to be a nice guy outside of the game you know yeah seems to be a nice guy outside of the game seems to be ridiculously arrogant as it relates to his skills and achievements in the game these are just assessments i could be totally wrong but needless to say uh he's had a cob on right he's had a fucking he's got all marty arsed hasn't he because valve have dropped an update in the middle of a in the middle of a game in the middle of a tournament rather and he's he's crying about it and it's like okay well i don't know guys when are valve supposed to do now listen they can they not only can they tell you it's coming esl can also just play on the previous patch if you want guys like it's not it's not the end of the world it sucks when they do it but this is the big content patch like they've got to think about their player base you know player base is down like 36 percent from its peak or whatever it was whatever the number was so they've got to get this content out too sweet and i'm sorry your little esl you know sports washing tournament you know it it, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things to valve anymore you know i'm sorry like it's just it's just saudi politics now that's what you've all chosen so but anyway he said classic valve to release a huge update a week for rmr and in the middle of katavica i am happy that something is happening towards fixing the game but come on man uh and it's like well okay i don't know when when would they fix this stuff and then there was a follow-up tweet to that and this is how you know valve can never win <laughs> like they just can't win i wish they would stop trying to win and just do something else just do something cool and get away from the you know fuck the esports fuck fuck the gamers fuck everyone uh there's probably 10 new bugs in this patch and the smokes are totally fucked besides that it just takes time to get used to such a big update maybe it will benefit us maybe it won't i don't only think about me and the team with this tweet of course you don't brother course you don't you're definitely not hooksing out of your mind right now of course it's about you you need a w you need a win everyone's laughing at you all the jks stands are going jks died for this as they watch fucking nexa post hooksy numbers in the games you know like jk be better than this you know where's all that team chemistry you were fucking meant to be getting when you brought nexa in so like you know you need a win you do need a w and obviously uh, you know, he's having a fucking Benny about it. And, like, it, it, it's sort of pathetic. Because it's like, when when else would you want Valve to update it? They've got to make some changes before the fucking major. And, obviously, there's going to be bugs after an update. They're on hand to fix these things. ESL, totally not obligated, by the way, to use this patch. They don't have to. They can, they can do a rollback. They have tournament clients and stuff. And, again, an option Valve don't have to allow them to have but they do. Uh, and then obviously uh, pimps like totally get what you're saying and it's not optimal for your heart, you hardworking guys. But what are they supposed to do? There's an important tournament happening non-stop every week until post-major. Hardly their fault we saturate the calendar. This is the most aware thing Pimp has ever said. Like, Jacob, brother, you're winning me over. Not only have you changed your analysis style and you've been super fucking fierce on the desks recently and I've been loving it, you're also talking sense. You're also talking sense. What are Valve supposed to do with their game when every dickhead wants to milk their game by having tournament after tournament after tournament after tournament? A situation set to likely get worse once we abolish partnered leagues in 2025. What are they supposed to do? How many people do they have to bring to the table to discuss when can we release an update? No, Valve, 
needs to be more involved in the esports side of things they need a community manager i totally stand by that assessment they need somebody who can go out provide messaging to the esports community and take feedback from the community instead of doing it once in a blue moon at a group when they all descend on an event in secret you know like that that's just common sense their approach to feedback is anachronistic but that being said their primary concern always has to be the consumers that buy and play their games that is that is that the esports thing is your thing right and valve are letting you run that thing and they barely ever get involved you know so if people are going to fucking stack the table with event after event after event spoiler one of your events will fall afoul of an update how about this what why does no one flip the script and go why don't tournament operators contact valve with a set calendar of what they're going to do and ask if valve would be willing to tailor updates around the gaps in the calendar why is the onus not on the tournament operators oh that's right valve band <laughs> yeah fucking thought so so anyway, this is this is where Hooksy's at, by the way. Like Hooksy's on some unreal shit. Like, I've, I, I, like this guy thinks he's like fucking, like you know, like some sort of prime like god tier sports person. It's it's like mental. Uh, he he then followed it up with this. Right, if it happened once or twice, I would give them a pass. But it's literally every fucking time. Cannot be that hard to schedule updates and meet deadlines to make it better for everyone instead of whatever the hell this is. Like, who are you? Like, who? Who? For real? Like, put it this way: when Simple had a Benny, Valve reached out to Simple and said, "Can you give us some feedback?" And Simple said, "If you don't know, fuck you." But Simple's the greatest player to ever touch this game. And by the way, people still rightly pointed out that was petulant and childish. You, 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 you haven't mastered the game at any stage in your career. You haven't mastered calling. You haven't mastered playing. Right? There is no change to the game they could make that is going to make you play at a level of a normal tier one pro. You are the most giga-boosted career I've ever seen in any version of Counter-Strike. It, it is a farce. That is cold water to the face reality, I am afraid, right? And I am sick and tired of just because he became a, a pathetic meme b before winning a tournament that everyone gives him a pass on this stuff. This is totally counterproductive. This is completely unhelpful to getting the game developed. Also, as a pro... As an IGL at a tier one organization, you literally have all the options to back channel. You can back channel through G2, you can back channel through ESL, you could go to Valve directly. They would make time to listen to you. But instead, you say ridiculous things like this. And by the way, Valve should not give a shit about Hooksy's opinions about when they roll out updates, when there are like millions of players around the world wanting this game to be good and wanting it to be updated and investing their time and energy into playing it. So no, 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 no. This is outrageous. This is ridiculous. Like, listen, I've criticized Valve in the past for the timing of updates. There's definitely been times when it's like you couldn't have picked a worse time. But do you know how we got around that? We just used the previous version and it was fine. It never actually impacted on tournaments. I'm having a hard time thinking of like when an update has really like fucked up a tournament with the maybe the exception of the London Face It Major, where that update created that bug with the, the uh, feet, with the sound effects for, for walking. So it's definitely happened. And by the way, everyone says that's a disgrace. You know, like everyone rightly criticized them for that. This not a problem although you know the 10 bugs which are there 10 new bugs in the game almost certainly not but let's uh let's see what esl decided to do esl have decided oh we're not even going to do a tournament rollback so hooksy will of course criticize them for this uh because hooksy's consistent and not just another fucking baby having a cry esl said with the rmr starting next week we've got we've gathered feedback from teams uh, in the IEM Katowice 2024 playoff stage in the latest update, after running tests internally and discussions about the patch, we've decided that the playoff stage will be played on the latest update. So, by the way, right, 
You, this is it, Hooksy. You now tweet about how it's ESL's fault, right? 100%. You're totally going to do that, right? Your little fucking Saudi business partners, you're going to cunt them off, yeah, now publicly, right? 100% you've got to do that. Because you could have had the previous version, the good version, you know? The version you were whining about before the new version, which you're now whining about. You could have had that version, Hooksy, but you can't, right? But, so, that, but you're not going to do that, are you? And I know why you're not going to do it. Because you know when your fucking bread is buttered? And let's be real, Valve are just so aloof and don't care about the things you say about them like they just don't care because why would they I, I, I just, every time i feel sad i just look at my bank account and i'm sorted I, every time i'm every time i feel sad i just look at all the amazing games i've worked on and know i could walk into any industry job and instead i get to work at a company where i'm totally fucking autonomous and get to work on anything i want to work on right and i get a free holiday to hawaii every year paid for by the company so yeah actually you know what I, I, hooksy you nearly hurt my feelings there but yeah i, I think i'll get over it Right, so dunking on Valve is just easy, isn't it? Dunking on Valve is just easy because they never, they never clap back, they never fucking react. I'll wait for it. Where's the tweet saying ESL has made a terrible decision? Show me a single pro saying that this, this is bad. Right? Not only are teams not complaining about ESL, they are making joking content in conjunction with obviously pre-approval from all of the, you know the little business partnerships they do look game of legion haha <laughs> this is team spirits next map they're all pretending by the way that donk isn't just a phenomenal player probably one of the best raw talents we've ever seen right and you know, it's something in the game it's something in cs2 now that they've changed it donk's gonna be bad right and obviously look see <laughs> ah it's airport it's airport they're going to the airport they're gonna be flying away they're gonna be flying away well hang on right if you care about the integrity of the game and it's bad that valve have done this update then surely you should be complaining about this game of legion show some solidarity with your players and teams no they're laughing and joking about it oh it's the same with heroic there it is Un unlucky team spirit ah valve have done an update that hooksy says is game breaking but now that ESL have said that they're going to play on it, it's a joke. Ah, do you see what fucking pathetic hypocrites the pro scene are? Like, do you get it? Like, do you get how they don't actually care? They don't care. It's just clout. Spoiler, obviously now, fully invested in Team Spirit, banging everyone out and Donk, getting to call them all cocksuckers. And then when they come out, when they find him, he just burns the money and says it's about sending a message. Fuck <laughs> you, I'm all about that. Well, that's where I'm at now. Like, fuck all these clowns. By the way, haven't seen Spirit complain about it. If they have, I apologise, but I ain't seen it. Haven't seen, didn't see Donk complaining about it. Weird. And as I said, will it fucking nerf him? Not at all. Not at all. He was tearing motherfuckers up in CSGO. The only thing that we're going to find out about Donk is can he do it in front of a crowd? And if he can, if a crowd don't phase him and he's the same dude when fucking sky's the limit... We'd have a, we're going to have a wicked time this year in CS, right? Think about that ahead of the major, the return of Simple, tantalizingly. Like, is, is he coming back? Is he not? Nobody knows what's going on there. We got fucking Donk. We got Zewu. We got Munasi ca carrying the fuck out of Hooksy. Actually could be a legit time of fantastic narratives, but you wouldn't know it from the way the fucking pros and the community just constantly cry about it. When did I become the fucking optimist in the room? What the fuck has happened here? You should all be ashamed.